Welcome to The Mix VR, the podcast dedicated to all things virtual reality gaming and news. I'm your host, Jeep Girls, community builder and caster, and I'm thrilled to bring you a unique blend of expert insights and exciting updates from the world of VR. Join me as we explore the latest news, games, hardware, and trends shaping the future of virtual reality. So sit back, grab your headset, and get ready to mix it up on The Mix VR. Hello and welcome to The Mix VR, the podcast dedicated to all things virtual reality, gaming, and news. Today, we're discussing a pressing matter that has rocked one of VR communities to its core. Tuesday, January the 31st, 2023, Ready at Dawn, which was acquired by Meta in 2020, announced they are closing Echo VR. And this will be in effect as of August the 1st, 2023. Although a free downloadable game in the Meta VR headsets, Echo VR has made its way to the top of the VR esports gaming category. Echo VR has numerous leagues built around it with daily commentated matches across those leagues. The largest league in the community being VRML with just under 600 teams worldwide. There is a pro organization as well, NEPA, the National Esport Professional Association, and their 32 professional and AAA teams. There are also many other leagues all over the community, including VR Esports League, multiple women's leagues, VR Party League, Collegiate VR Esports, and high school leagues. Now, according to CNBC, Reality Labs unit of Meta recorded an operating loss of $4.28 billion in the fourth quarter, which contributed to a total loss of $13.72 billion for the year of 2022. Meta has purchased nine VR development studios since 2019, including recent approval in the ruling to purchase Within Unlimited, the maker of Supernatural, giving Meta the largest VR catalog in the world. Other studios include Beat Games, known for Beat Saber, Ready at Dawn, known for Lone Echo 1 and 2, Echo VR and Combat, and The Order 1886, Senzaru Games, known for Asgard's Wrath and Marvel Powers United, Downpour Interactive, known for Onward, Big Box VR, known for Population One, Twisted Pixel Games, known for Wilson's Heart, Defector, and Path of the Warrior, Armature Studios, known for Resident Evil 4, and Camouflage, known for Republic VR and Iron Man VR. Now, according to information.com, the acquisition amount of Within Unlimited was $400 million. The other acquisition amounts are unknown. Now, as VR enthusiasts, we know how important Echo VR has been to the development and growth of the VR gaming industry. In fact, in a CNBC interview on May the 28th, 2020, Mark Zuckerberg was asked to name the coolest non-Facebook app or program that you've started using during quarantine. Mark Zuckerberg spoke fondly of Echo VR, stating, It's incredibly fun, and I think it will be a glimpse of the future where there will be more experiences like this that I think a lot of people will enjoy. Now, this announcement has left many of us feeling disappointed and frustrated, but it's not the end. We can make a difference and help save Echo VR. To help us better understand the situation and what we can do, I've invited a special guest today. Joining us is EJP2016, owner of the Fight for Echo Discord server and providing a place to organize and plan the attempt to save Echo. EJP will share his thoughts on the current situation and provide us with tips on how we can save Echo VR. So let's get started. EJP, how are you, my friend? I'm good. I'm a little, a little tired, not going to lie, but I'm good. Can you tell us about the Fight for Echo movement and its goal? Sure. So the, the Fight for Echo movement is um, a community initiative based on several players uh, from Echo VR that have a shared common goal, which is effectively to, to try and um, maintain the game and, and preserve it. Essentially, that's 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 the end goal um, of this of this movement. In your opinion, why is Echo VR so important to the VR gaming community? Yeah, I think I think the the most important thing is that 
um, and, and the impact that it's had is that it's managed to bring people together um, internationally, es essentially. And it's it's one of the one of the few games that requires a lot of physicality uh, with Echo VR is that it's bridging that divide between physical sports that a lot of people played and virtual reality gaming. I, I've seen several stories of people who used to play sports, maybe professionally, maybe not professionally, maybe in high school, and they had a high school injury or a college injury. They haven't been able to have that kind of enjoyment that they used to have, but they can in, in Echo VR because there's less of a barrier to entry. There is still some physicality required, but it isn't the same as like playing sports at a at a, a high school or a college level, perhaps. How can non-gamers and non-Echo gamers help support the fight for Echo movement? For for non-gamers or, or non-Echo gamers, I think it would be um, to, at least for the, the non-Echo gamers, would be to kind of, to reach into your communities and kind of, of like ask yourself if, if we're talking about just other gamers that aren't Echo gamers, ask, ask yourself like, could could my favorite game be next right and maybe if it isn't your favorite game maybe it's your second favorite game who who knows right like there like there there are obviously huge games out there i don't need to to, to name names but what if it happened to one of those right and john carmack's a, a legend in the gaming industry he um the points that he's making are, are very pertinent points um and there he he is talking to the gaming industry better than, than any of us could um as for for non-gamers um i think it would it would be a little bit more of the same right like don't uh, uh, you, you know what i'm gonna I, i'm actually gonna take take a, a, a quote off off of uh um boz's recent ama on instagram i, I mean john carmack he said john carmack would treat games like uh, and their disappearance as strange. He treats them as already treats them as books. Like think about this as if it were your favorite book or your favorite piece of art or your favorite song. Imagine someday somebody says, you can't listen to your favorite song anymore. You can't read your favorite book anymore. You can't look at your favorite piece of art in a museum or you can't look at it on the internet. It's just gone. We were having a discussion, my father and I, and we were talking about it and the way he saw it was, imagine if your local community had a Little League baseball park and all of the kids flocked to this baseball park to play ball. And then one day they got there and the park was closed. Not only was the park was closed, but you couldn't play ball anymore. There were no bats. There were no balls. There were no gloves. There was nothing. And you weren't allowed to touch it ever again. Right. Think of it that way. And and. And again, share and kind of support um, the the articles that are out there from whatever uh, source you get your 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 media from. Um, share those articles and and have those discussions with with other people because that, I, I mean I I'm not going to say that that kind of thing can happen, but that's how it feels to us. What kind of response have you received from the VR gaming community? This isn't just personally. I think in general, a lot of the people in our community overall have have been getting a lot of great feedback. This this game, uh, it transcends. It transcends the entire genre. To be honest, uh, I mean, I, I'm confident making that statement. Now, how can other Echo players get involved? What is the call to action? How can they be a part of the fight for Echo? Um, I think it's. I think that's kind of a kind of a two pronged answer. I think the first part of it is um, obviously share your stories, and then the second part of that is is to is to to bring people in. Um, play pubs. Take one of your teammates. Take somebody that you like to play with, and play in a pub. Do whatever you think makes sense, and and show people what this game is and what it means to you, and and be very intentional about that. Well, EJP, I don't want to keep you any longer. I know you have a lot to do and you certainly have a lot on your plate over there at Fight for Echo. But if you need anything at all, let us know how we can help and we'll be happy to, to pitch in. Thank you so much for joining me. Will do. Thanks for having me.
Well, there you go. That was EJP with Fight for Echo. And he seems to share the same sentiment that we also heard from Palador over on TikTok, which was play pubs. Show people why this game is important. Keep your head held high and hold on to hope. We continue to fight this fight every day and we'll make sure that you stay updated on what is going on. Well, that's all for today's episode of The Mix VR. I want to thank EJP again for stopping by and joining us and providing some valuable insights into the fight for Echo Movement and how we can help save Echo VR. Remember, together we can make a difference. So let's continue to spread the word and support the fight for Echo Movement. Virtual reality, real adrenaline. Until next time, stay immersed in the virtual world and keep mixing it up on The Mix VR.